Hey, welcome to a Python advanced Python tutorial on how to create a whiskey web framework for completely from scratch. So if you ever wondered how you can create a flask or Django of your own, this will show you or give you the necessary tools to start creating your own web framework. It is a pretty long and robust, or as you say, pretty long and tedious process, but you will learn a lot if you actually build it from what we, or at least build up from what we built in this series. Now, before we continue anymore, I need to lay out some definitions or at least some some ground rules so that we all have a basic understanding of what's going on. The first most is that there is a difference between a web framework and a web server. A web framework and a web server are two different things in, in such that when a user sends a request to a server, the server is going to be like, hey, do I know how to process this? Do I know what to do with it? If it does, it's not going to call any web framework or anything else and it's just going to say, hey, I know how to do this. Here you go, user. This is what you wanted. Boom. Let's go. But if it gets to a point where the web server is like, hey, the user sent this request. I'm not sure what to do with this. I'm going to pass it on to the web framework and see if it knows. So the web server tells the web framework, hey, do you know what the user wants from this? And the web framework looks, takes the request and looks at it and says, like, yeah, yeah, I know what to do. Maybe the user is requesting some type of uh, web page where they can see their favorite shows or something, and the web framework knows how to handle that. So it's like, oh, yeah, here we go. Boom. Renders the page and then returns it to the web server, and the web server passes this to the user. Awesome. All good. Now, if the web framework doesn't know how to handle it, it's going to tell the web server, hey, I don't know what to do with it either. I mean, I don't know what it is. It is what it is. So the web server is like, okay, no problem. And that's when the web server returns some type of error, 404 or, or 500, or depending on how you configure it or how it goes about. But yeah, but that's pretty much the gist of it. A web framework and web server work together, but they are not the same thing. The second thing is that ideally you have worked with some type of web framework like Python. I'm not Python, like Django or Flask or something that is in Python. It's fine if you worked out on other frameworks like uh, on Java or something that, that each language has their own web framework. So as long as you have some type of web framework, I think you'll be okay. The third one is that this is a, I guess, quote unquote, advanced Python tutorial or advanced uh, series. So you do need some type of knowledge already of Python. I won't be going over the basics, like breaking down what the function is, what a class is or anything like that. I might briefly say like a one sentence or two about some of the things, but I won't go into detail because the main focus is on building the web framework, not on teaching you basics of Python. All right. And the last bit and the most importantly is about PEP333. Now in Python, in the Python community, there's these things called PEPs and they're basically proposals to enhance the Python language. And this PEP, specifically the one highlighted over here, if I can actually get my cursor there, yeah, that one, actually says, hey, this is how you create a WSGI web framework. This is a standard on how to do it. This is how web servers and web frameworks will communicate. Now, a standard needs to be put in place. That way, all web servers know how to communicate with all WSGI web frameworks. And there is no issue between one web server supporting, you know, a different method of talking to web frameworks versus another. So it's nice that everybody has a standard. That way, everybody knows how to talk to everyone. So that's the main idea. And pretty much, if you want to go above and beyond the web framework that we build, you'll definitely need this, especially if you want to build a web server. So that will help you. So go ahead and Google this, uh, the PEP 3 to 3. It should be like the first link. You can go ahead and read it. Okay, cool. Now, before I d dive into whatever I have here, into the most basic form of a web framework, I'm going to demo you what it actually looks like when we get it all at the end of this, what it's supposed to do. So if you have a w WSGI web framework, it should work with any web server that supports WSGI. For example, GUnicorn is a very popular web framework, uh, web server that a lot of people use when they're using uh, Python web frameworks. So our web framework, since it's a WSGI, should be able to run on GUnicorn out of the box. So GUnicorn should know how to use our web framework. So let's test it out. So this is going to be the end product. I'm just going to give you a quick demo, and then we'll go over what's over here in the code. All right, so I'm going to press Enter to run the server. Oh, it is busy. OK, uh, list processes. I know what to do. Uh, is it this one? Yes, this one. OK, 
Sorry about that, there was already a lingering process. Uh, let me run it again and it should work. Worker failed. Pit is not a package. Ah, well that is simple, my guys. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. Everything should be working now. So as you can see, it says listening on port 9999. And I open another shell and I'm gonna simply make a get request to this endpoint called slash cars. And the dash J just means I want this in JSON. Now this HTTP tool that I'm using, you can think of it as curl. If you don't, guys don't know what curl is, it's just a way to make requests uh, online on the internet. So this is saying, hey, I'm gonna make a request. It's gonna be a get. I'm gonna request this endpoint, this server, localhost, and the endpoint is gonna be slash cars. And this is gonna be a JSON request. So let's press enter. I ideally, I should get some JSON back. Boom, Look at that. I get an endpoint. And in that endpoint, I see a key of cars and I get a list of cars. Now, let's say I want to add something to that list. Well, what do I do? Well, simple. I can, instead of a get, I just do a post. And then I say the car I want to add is, uh, let's say, Mercedes. Mercedes, yeah, whatever. That should be fine. And this request will also be a JSON from the slash J. And I should see that the Mercedes was added to the cars object. Ta-da, it is added which is awesome now. So this is just a basic example on how, what this web framework will do. You, of course, you can extend it, but yeah, enough of that. Let me go over to the actual code. Uh, before that, let me kill this server. Okay, cool, it's dead. Uh, okay, cool. So when you create a WSGI web framework, it's pretty simple, straightforward actually to get started. So right here, we have a function called SimpleBap and in a class called uh, Pyte, I guess it's short for Python YouTube framework. I wasn't very creative, sue me, you know, it is what it is. Enough of that, all right, cool. So these two are exactly the same. Let me break down the simple app. So as you can see, it's the simplest possible application object. We have the status, we have the response header, which is text plain. And then we say, hey, uh, server, this is going to be our response. We're going to send the status. This is going to be the status of this response. This is going to be the header for it. And then the actual value that we're going to return is hello world. This is what we're going to return. Uh, hello world over here. So this is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is creating a class and that class being a callable. That way you can do something like this app equals pyte or we can do app equals simple app like that, it should both be the same. But for now, I'll leave it like this. So it's the same thing. We have the status, we have the content type, and we're saying, hey server, what I'm gonna send you, it's gonna have a status of 200, okay, and it's gonna be, and these are the response headers. And now I'm gonna return the actual response, which is hello YouTube, which is over here, which is a string of hello YouTube. It's just a binary string. So in web frameworks like Python, no, I keep saying Python, like in Flask and Django, the responses you usually do like return hello right like type of string well in the back end what they're doing behind the scenes is that they're actually converting that response into into byte into bytes that way it's easier to pro that's so the server knows how to process bytes um, so just doing that but right now we're not taking we're not doing that automatically we just we're just manually doing it to give you an idea of what it actually what's actually going on so if I actually run this, uh, let's see, tutorial, what is this one app, base nine, let's go, cool. So I'm running it. And then if I do just the basic itself, 9,000, not a post, but just a get, uh, you see, hello YouTube, beautiful. And if I actually kill this server and then I switch it out with a simple app, simple app right there and I do I start it again and then I resend that command over that request I should say it should see hello world instead of hello YouTube damn look at that everything is beautiful it works it's just simple as that now for the next video it will be a lot more complex but this was just an intro video as how to get started 
and I will put the link to this GitHub. Everything, all the code we hear will be on the GitHub. I'll link to it, and you guys can start messing around with it. But yes, so you guys, uh, you guys can install G Unicorn, all that, and get it running. Uh, if you watch this, I'm assuming you know how to do that. Uh, there's a requirements.txt file. Oh, well, I'll update with GUnicorn in that one. But that's pretty much the only prerequisite for this web framework, uh, adding GUnicorn to be able to run it. Or you can use whatever web server you like and just hook it up like that because all of them should be able interchangeable. But yeah, that is it. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in the next video.